substandard housing, lots of deaths. Fred Trump contributed to all of that. Well, Coney Island is a neighborhood in Brooklyn. There's 60,000 people who live here, and it was known for all these immigrant cultures mixing. Fred Trump, the father of Donald Trump, was involved in so many scandals in Coney Island. What happened in the 1950s was there was an area of Coney Island on Ocean Parkway which was referred to as the gut. It was a real mixed neighborhood. Fred Trump thought that this site would be better if he had it. He used his political connections to gain these sites. When it was declared an urban renewal area, all of these people had to be relocated. All of this took place between 1960 and 1962. I was about 11, maybe going on 12 years old. They had tore down a lot of the houses. Do you remember what year this was? It must have been 62. And I didn't know who Mr. Trump was. Men came to the house and we were told that we had to move then gained federal housing funds and then overcharged the tenants and overestimated all of his costs. So he was accused of windfalls of millions of dollars. African American members of that community were not offered apartments in Trump Village. The white members of that community were. So you had 900 African American families almost entirely who had to be relocated. And this became another one of Fred Trump's scams. What he did was to collect a relocation fee from the city. He made a profit on each family that was relocated. And he took these families and put them into the summer bungalows of the west end of Coney Island. The owners would say, well, we don't have heat. They're not winterized. He said, oh, you put in space heaters. They had bad wiring. They couldn't handle the space heaters. A lot of these bungalows burned. There were many deaths. Children died in these bungalow fires over the years. I witnessed this and I documented it. Starting when I was 11 or 12 years old, I began photographing the neighborhood. Here you can see one of the bungalow colonies. And here is a uh, fire in the bungalows. These fires were a constant part of my childhood here. They were almost all African-American families. It's well documented that Trump was racist in his apartment rentals. We sued the Trump Organization and Fred Trump and Donald Trump. We found how Trump personnel would be told to deal with people of color. One of the ways in which they were told to deal was to put a big C on their application. He was constantly in the headlines for one scandal or another. He built housing at Beach Haven that was supposed to be for veterans. Trump was investigated by the federal government who called him a real estate profiteer who built the public out of $4 million. He was accused of polluting Coney Island Creek. He paid a fine for that. Many people know that he was the person who demolished Steeplechase Park. Steeplechase was the anchor of Coney Island. As long as Steeplechase was there, Coney Island would survive. Steeplechase opened in 1897. It was the most beautiful amusement park. This was something that had quite an influence on my, <laughs> on my childhood. It was an indoor amusement park. It had a beautiful stained glass facade. It had classical architecture. There were fluted columns. There was statuary, uh, rose gardens. The rides were all classical rides. You pay your money and you take your choice. You can be spun, banged, turned upside down, or half killed. There was an attraction called the Insanatorium. When you got off the steeplechase horse, you were chased by a clown with a paddle. It was not like your typical amusement park. It was more about leaving your everyday life and being inside this magical place. Fred Trump stepped in and bought the property. What Trump wanted to put on the steeplechase site was, as he described it, Miami Beach housing, luxury housing with waterfront views. The steeplechase pavilion and 14 acres surrounding it was zoned as C7, which is amusement zoning. That's the only use it has. He tried to get the zoning changed and the city denied it. So he figured if he demolished the pavilion and raised the site, that the city would be forced to give him his zoning change. In 
September 1966, he sent out engraved invitations to witness the beginning of the demolition of the park. He posed in front of a bulldozer. He had, as the headline said, six bikini beauties posing in the shovel of this bulldozer. They threw bricks through the stained glass, knocking out the teeth and the smile of the steeplechase face. It was very similar to uh, a lot of the things that his son Donald does as far as having women as props and just being vicious in, in um, their business. This is the demolition of the pavilion. You can see the stained glass and the horses painted on the front. This is where the steeplechase face was. And I witnessed this. This is one of the saddest experiences of my life. I thought until the last minute that somehow this building would survive and would be a, uh, a landmark. It really led to the downfall of Coney Island for all the small business people. With Steeplechase as the anchor, all of these private businesses profited. With the death of Steeplechase, you had a place that was just devastated for years and years. But being Fred Trump, he sold it to the city after the Steeplechase Pavilion was demolished and he made a million dollar profit on the deal. All these scandals are documented and they all led up to, I believe, the way that Donald Trump does business. After speaking with Donald, they said he could really run a flat store. Now, a flat store is a crooked attraction. It's one of the uh, attractions that you can't win in Coney Island. A lot of the concession owners remember meeting him and how they thought he had a future as a con man. <laughs> Coney Island survived because there were a lot of people who were heavily invested here emotionally. The city kind of gave up on it. The police kind of gave up. The sanitation department gave up. There was a feeling of abandonment. It wasn't the best time to have uh, a business here. And a lot of people stuck it out, and they're the ones who saved it. It's taken a long time to get out from under the shadow of Fred Trump.